Hi there, this is Sunmesh from Pixim Perfect. I hope you're doing fantastic. And first of all, let's understand why PPI does not make sense. Have a look. Let's say you have an image. All right. From here to here, it's about 1000 pixels. And similarly, from top to bottom, it's about 1000 pixels again. Now, what is the resolution, my friend? It would be 1000 by 1000 pixels, no matter what. Where 1000 is the length and the breadth width and height no matter how you say it it's the same thing now what if i say that from here to here it is also one inch now keep in mind i am saying that there is no mathematical relation here what would be the ppi so here in one inch we have 1000 pixels in other words we can say that we have 1000 pixels per one inch so we can say that this is 1000 pixels per inch 1000 ppi now what if we say from here to here is not one inch it is two inch in that case what would be the ppi it would be 1000 pixels per two inch so 1000 by two in other words we can say that would be 500 ppi okay so if it's two inch it's 500 ppi if it's one inch it's going to be thousand ppi all right but keep in mind in all of these cases no matter what you define the resolution is still thousand by thousand pixels so does that tell us ppi is imaginary let me share with you one more example inside photoshop back in the magical world of photoshop and let's create a new document by going to file new and let's create a 2000 by 2000 pixel document and let's name this test one now keep in mind what is the resolution here it is 300 pixels per inch let's just reduce it to one pixel per inch and let's create all right now let's create one more document by going to file new and this time we're going to keep it the same it's going to be test two instead of one let's just have it at 10,000 and click on create let's see if the quality changes so we're going to take a brush and dab on test one and similarly dab on test two now have a look both have the same quality one ppi is of the same quality as 10,000 ppi there is no change here so you must be wondering unmesh what is changing my friend well if you turn on the rulers by pressing ctrl or command r and right click on the ruler and change the unit to inches you would notice that it's zero right here and you have to zoom way out to see one inch why because this is 10,000 pixels per inch right now if you go to test one and if you turn on the ruler by pressing ctrl or command r and if you change the unit to inches have a look from the left edge to the rightmost edge it's 2000 inches why because it is one pixels per inch and this is a 2000 by 2000 pixels document is it starting to make sense now have a look only rulers are changing that's all now, since we are talking about PPI and why it doesn't make sense to delve into the mystery further, we need to understand what is a pixel. So think of it like a box with one color. That's all there is to it. It's a simple square with one color. A lot of these boxes are squares with just one color combined together to create an image like this. Now, if you zoom in, you will be able to notice these boxes or pixels. Now, if you start counting from the left to the right, let me take you to the corner. If you start counting from right here and go right till the right edge, you would notice that there are 2,800 pixels. And then from top to bottom, there would be 1,866 pixels. And this, my friend, that you see here, 2,800 by 1,866, that is the resolution. There are several ways in which we can express the resolution. Let's say a new camera comes out and they advertise that this camera has 24 megapixels right here. It can shoot 24 megapixels. Now, what does that mean? So when you take this camera and click a photo in the highest quality, the resolution would be 6000 by 4000 pixels. If you look at the properties of that image or open that up in Photoshop or any other photo editing application, you can see this number. Now, if you actually went ahead and multiplied both of these numbers, what would be the result? Well, that would be 24, 0, 0, 0. Again, three zeros in total, six zeros. Now, what is six zeros? Well, that is 24 million 
pixels. A fancier way of saying that is 24 mega pixels. That's all. So that my friend is another way to show resolution. Another example, let's say the new iPhone comes out and they advertise that the rear camera can capture images with a resolution of 12 mega pixels. To show it clearly, here I have an image which is a very, very cliche shot, but I had to take it when I was in New York. And if you go to file, file info, you would notice that I took it with the iPhone 11 Pro Max. If you do a quick Google search, you would find that even in Apple's website, its cameras have 12 megapixel right here. So if you come back to this photo, have a look. It is 3024 multiplied by 4032. If you multiply those numbers, that would be roughly around 12 million pixels. In other words, 12 megapixels. So why am I telling you all this? Why does it even matter? Well, let me ask you a question. What is the length of one pixel? So if you take just one pixel, what do you think is the length of that? Is it one centimeter? Is it one inch? It is a digital unit, my friend. There cannot be any physical length of a digital pixel. Does that make sense? So if we come back to this image, this is made up of 12 million tiny boxes with one color. That's all. Asking the length of a pixel is like asking the weight of a thought. So how does PPI make sense? It shouldn't make sense at all because pixel is digital inch is a physical length, right? Because if you look at these boxes with one color, no matter how big or small these boxes are, it doesn't affect the quality of the image. The only thing that affects the quality of the image is the number of pixels or the number of these squares or boxes with just one color, not the size of the box. So there is no physical size of this pixel. There is no size for a thought. So how does that equate to inches? So this is why PPI is absolutely imaginary. Take a look at this. Coming to the very first example, if we defined this distance to be one inch, it was 1000 PPI. If we defined it as two inch, it would be 500 PPI. So in both of these cases, we are defining it. There is no mathematical relation going on right here. For example, if you take speed into account, what is speed? It is distance by time, right? If you have a body going from point A to point B, which is 10 kilometers in distance, and it's taking, sorry for the extras, and it's taking two hours for that travel, what would be the speed? It would be 10 kilometers by two hours. It would be simply five kilometer per hour. And there is a mathematical relation going on right here. If it's a 10 kilometer and it's taking two hours, the speed is five kilometer per hour. But in this case, there is no mathematical relation between these values. We are defining all of these values. So if PPI is imaginary, does that mean that it totally doesn't make sense? So when does PPI make sense? Well, it is an absolute necessity whenever you're dealing with anything that has a physical aspect attached to it. Make sense? No? Let me share with you. Let's say you were about to print, focus on the word print, an A4 size piece of paper. So let's go to file, new, and inside of the print column, let's choose A4. Now we are considering a physical paper. This, my friend, is an A4 size paper. This has a physically measurable size. It is not digital where the sizes of the box or the pixel does not matter. It is physical. And it makes sense for us to define how many pixels will be in one inch. Does that make sense now? So let's say in one inch of this paper, we want 300 pixels or 150 pixels. And accordingly, the resolution of the image in pixels would be set. So let's say we chose A4. And if we choose inch right here, it's going to tell you that the width is going to be 8.268 inches. Now for simplicity, let's say we want 100 pixels every one inch of this physically measurable paper. So let's type in 100 pixels per inch. Now keep in mind the width is 8.268, right? And if you create, what is the resolution in pixels? 827 by 1169. Focus on the first one. It was 8.268 inches for this paper. So if every inch has 100 pixels, that would be 800. 27. It has chosen the closest value because it was 0.268, so it has chosen 27 here. So 
827 pixels. Similarly, if you want to print a higher quality and if you want one inch to have 300 pixels, we can type in 300 and accordingly, if you multiply roughly 300 by 8, it should be somewhere around 24, right? 8 multiplied by 3 is 24. So have a look. So that's how everything right here is calculated. So if you type in 300 PPI and you have extremely ideal paper quality and extremely ideal printer, it will print 300 pixels per inch. Let's take another example. If you consider a billboard, you will be viewing it from a very large distance. You really don't need to print 300 pixels per inch of that billboard. So just for fun, if we create 450 inch by 150 inch billboard right here, and if we choose 300 pixels per inch resolution, and if we try to create it, it is so huge that even Photoshop cannot show it. Have a look. It is 135,000 pixels wide. Now, if you take a brush and try to paint anything right in here, it's so laggy. I've stopped painting and even, even now it's continuing. So, as you can tell, it's not practically possible to have 300 PPI for a huge billboard. So that is why billboards are usually in the range of 10 to 30 PPI. Now, PPI is not just limited to printing. It can be applied to anything that has a physical aspect, anything which you can measure physically. For example, let's say a new phone comes out or a new tablet comes out and the screen of that phone is 2 inch here by 5 inch. 400 pixels in width, 1000 pixels in height. What do you think is the PPI of the screen? It is simply 1000 pixels per 5 inch. In other words, 200 PPI. There you go. So therefore, when you look at the pixel density of these screens, in other words, how many pixels are there in a particular area, you can express it in PPI. For example, the Samsung S20 Ultra has 511 PPI, pixels per inch. So in every one inch of that screen of Samsung S20 Ultra, you have 511 small boxes with one color. All right. Similarly, with iPhone 13 Pro Max, it is 458 pixels per inch inch. Now you might say, Umesh, all of this is nice and good, but what about DPI? What is DPI then? Well, DPI is simply dots per inch. It is your printer's ability as to how many dots it can print per inch. That's it. DPI is simply the physical dots per inch on a printed document. Do keep in mind that DPI has nothing to do with anything digital. However, PPI has everything to do with everything digital when there's a physical aspect. So for example, you want 300 pixels per inch of this paper. So if your printer can print it, if it has like 300 or 600 DPI capability, you will see 300 pixels per inch of this paper. Also, the paper has to be good. Now, if you're still confused, the best way to understand all of these concepts is to just experiment. When I was starting out with Photoshop, a lot of people would say that whenever you create a new document, let's say even if you have 2000 by 2000 pixel dimension determined, you should enter 72 pixels per inch for width. That is very ideal. And somebody would say you should enter 300 pixels per inch. Well, now you know that none of that makes sense if there is no physical aspect attached to it. So this is how through different experimentations, questioning and challenging everything that you have been taught, you will understand the concepts better and save yourself from a lot of baloney. Also, I recommend reading this brilliant article by Colette Pomerleau at 99designs if you want to learn more. It is simple to read, brilliant explanation and thank you so much Colette for putting this together. And thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did, Make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.